Hi and welcome to uh, the setup video for our um, Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress series. Um, this is an introductory video. I'll try to make sure it's uh, short enough to, um, to keep you entertained and tell you all about the setup, our explorers and uh, what we're going to do in the very first um, uh, expedition. All right, so <clears throat> let's proceed with our explorers. There they are, ready to go in maglev. This style is called maglev. It's a mode of transportation for our explorers. And here we have Thaddeus the Purifier, our healer, his best friend and companion, uh, Pius Vorn, she's a missionary zealot. She is absolutely fantastic with her flamer. She is a beast on the board, as you will see. I often say that she's overpowered with some of her abilities, especially with some fantastic roles. You just obliterate enemies, enemies and you go through, um, through the missions like, you know, hot knife through butter. Then we have Amalin Shadow Guide. She's an Asurani Ranger. She's, a, she's our long range uh, sniper, really. And right there in the back, mysterious Imperial Navigator, Esper Locarno. Our support debuffer, buffer uh, character who will come and play with his uh, Force Barrier and Mental Commands. I really enjoy playing this guy. I'll, sh I'll, t I'll show you shortly his uh, um, Explorer card and I'll tell you more about it as we go through some of his abilities in just a moment. We've set up our first expedition, uh, which consists of... Guys, move along for just a moment. All right. Which consists of eight cards. Uh, the way you set up your expeditions is that you take four challenge cards and four combat cards, you shuffle them together, and there you are. There you are. These are your exploration cards for this expedition. And this deck goes on top of the um, precipice board, which we'll discuss shortly. All right. For our very first expedition, these are the potential enemies that we will um, come across from the encounter deck. We have a traitor guardsman. This is a grenadier. There are many different. Uh, minis that represent different type of uh, weapons <coughs> which defines their abilities as you will see later on when we come across them on the battlefield and we draw their ai card Negavolt cultists absolutely fantastic fantastic mini i really dislike fighting these guys i really don't like them they can be very very deadly and you know, if you're not careful, they will obliterate your party in, in one turn, as you will see later on. Orgols, our shadowy creatures, they enjoy lurking in shadows away from line of sight. When they manage to come close, they will rip you to pieces with their claws. Terrifying creatures, all right? And spindle drones, all right? They look fragile, they look weak. But the more you kill them, the stronger they become. We'll discuss that <coughs> as we come across any of these, right? To our right, we have our initiative cards, one for each hostile group and one for each of our characters, like that. We will be, these will be used to define who goes first and who goes last, uh, the initiative truck. Um, so, there we are. We don't know what, what's in, inside of our encounter that yet. Therefore, we don't know how many groups we will encounter, but we have four. Four is the maximum, at least in, uh, in first expeditions, right? Let's move over to our precipice board. Uh, I think I'll just stick it right there in the corner, out of the way. Although we will be using uh, at least left portion of it <coughs> to uh, to roll our destiny dice, the black dice that we that we need uh, to define extra movements. So, and, you know, every turn you roll destiny dice, 
there you go the black dice here they are and any doubles are discarded unless you have mr locarno in your party more on that in just a moment so anyways you will roll these six destiny dice and they will be available for your characters as special actions there is a rule in the rules book saying that each character can use up to two destiny dice from the destiny board from the precipice board at a time per turn all right so they will go there all right also the exploration deck will go there we also have our discovery deck basically our loot deck that we will be going through as we uh, find loot on the board we also have the um, support functionalities of the spaceships that our explorers came with so to the left we have steed of matu here which is dedicated to amalin shadow guy we have u craft chato <laughs> um Daliak grek um spacecraft we don't have him or her in our party maybe next run we have the traveler for esper locarno and we have the clarion that our um pair came came on meaning Thaddeus and Vorn. all right each ship provides extra support or functionality once per expedition for either one plus if it is um, the character's ship or six plus if it's another character's uh, role so the state of matsu here allows us to pick a hostile group that has not been activated this turn and swap their activation initiative card with the card at the end of the combat track so that can be actually quite quite useful when you don't want a certain powerful group to initiate before you or, or somebody else so you can use that then the craft chateau allows the explorer to take a weapon action without spending an activation dice so it's like a three three attack okay any attack rolls that for that weapon action are automatically a critical success wow so it's a critical kill and guaranteed kill traveler um there are, uh, for the rest of the turn explorers are not visible to hostiles unless the hostile is adjacent so it's like a like shield protective shield or fog and clarion of course um allows us to perform the gambit step uh in sorry to perform a gambit without having to spend an activation dice so you might ask what, what what's a gambit i'll tell you about it when we begin our first first round basically it allows us to change positions on the initiative track more on that later okay then to the to the right we have our tracker for the groups and initiative tracker we probably we will not be using that that much maybe for the encounters but not for the initiative track i'll try to keep that handy somewhere close to uh, my play area so that it's visible and understandable for everybody all right so let's go through the dice now there's a lot of dice in um, different types of dice in blackstone fortress uh you saw the black dice right all over there right destiny dice used for the uh precipice board we have the activation dice the white dice four per character so you roll them each turn okay and then you put these on your character sheet slots like that i'll tell you all about it in just a moment then you have the action the action dice different shapes the eight the 12 the six and they act both as the attack and defense uh, dice with these symbols with, this, with these little triangles on them this is a um, success this is a critical success and that's it simplified same here right this is the best dice in the middle the weakest right like that and the big d20 black dice is the almighty blackstone dice this is the <laughs> 
this is the core of the game as you will see and it, these dice can be very very brutal to you if you're not lucky with it especially during the event phase at the end of each round okay before we finish off with our character sheets there's one thing lying over there in the back which is the 2019 annual containing a lot of extra scenarios, characters, lore, mechanics that can be added, mixed and matched with the original rules. Uh, we will be using that a lot during our gameplays. Um, what I want to start us off with very, very shortly is the light in the dark mission. Okay, I will not read the lore the introduction just yet but what i want to what i want to do is something slightly different basically the annual tells you to that you can you know run this mission anytime you want especially in the beginning of of a new game just like we're doing right now uh, there is a reason for that which i won't tell you about because what i want to do is slightly different this this time is that as a result of us completing the expedition this expedition that we're going to undertake in just a moment is that we are looking for information with regards to the location of this item okay so one of the reasons why Thaddeus and Pius Vorn are on this expedition is to find out more about the whereabouts of that item okay so if we succeed in going through all the encounters that are ahead of us in the exploration deck and we successfully return to the precipice, we will obtain information of where to find this item. So that's a little bit of role-playing campaign feel to it. Um, there's nothing of that in any of the you know the, any of the books. I just made it up myself. I enjoy doing that, especially in the Blackstone Fortress where you can mix and match and do whatever you like. And it's very, very easy to adjust this game to whatever, you know, whatever ticks your boxes, basically. Right. There we go. So let's finish off with <clears throat> introducing our characters. All right. I'll put each card on the stand here. It'll be easier for me to tell you all about it. We will not go through every single uh, piece. and We will be doing that quite a lot during the gameplay because what you see in front of you is the character sheet for the DS Purifier, a healer, and a somewhat decent damage dealer. Um, you can see his characteristics, move 2, defense d8, agility d6, and vitality d8 as well. You'll see why that's important later on. These four squares that you see in the middle are used to put the action dice that you roll each round to, uh, to tell you what you can do. And beneath in the weapon section, unique actions and secret agenda for different characters, this is where you find uh, the meat of this game because basically it tells you in this section it tells you what you can do with the activation dice so for example Thaddeus our mini storeroom priest for a dice with one plus on it so one of the action dice like that that he will take from his one of his four spots or two from the um, from the precipice board he can say okay i'm going to spend this let's say three to activate my power mole in last pistol and use d12 to attack monsters or enemies that are one space away from me one tile one hex away from me same for this so if i'm two or three spaces away i can spend this three or two or one or five because this is one plus so it's pretty easy to use and attack them with this dice for example servo stubber um three plus or five plus plus so you have a choice so if you decide to go for three or four you cannot use this ability if you have two or one so let's say you have four where is four come on four so you take four if you had rolled it yeah you take four from your 
um, action dice pool and you say, okay, I'm going to use my servo stubber, range three. So what, it, what that does is that Thaddeus can attack once for a cost of three plus, so that four plus applies. Carry out each attack one at a time, one after the other. The target chosen for the second attack must either be the same or um, as the target of the first attack or in the same hex or an adjacent hex to the target of the first attack. So he basically um, attacks with, uh, with just single attack or has the AOE effect if I have six or five. As you can see, I, I can attack twice and throw uh, 2d8 twice and choose the highest results out of them both and apply both results to your enemies. So very, very, very good. Um, if you have enough luck and you roll five pluses or have five pluses available in your precipice board. His unique action is a rallying cry, six plus, so very expensive. And he can basically heal one wound counter from any explorer in his or adjacent hex. So very, very useful. There is an option for um, all the characters to heal themselves. Uh, it's called Recuperate. And for one plus, you roll a Vitality roll. This check, oh, sorry, this check here. And if you roll a success, then you are, then you can heal one uh, normal wound. You have two types of wounds. This is a wound, and this one is a critical wound. The critical wounds and wounds, they come here and they cover your action dice slots. So that means that if you're wounded, next turn you only have three options left. If, you're, if you have two wounds, then you have two options left and so on and so forth. When you reach four wounds um, and you receive the fifth, you are knocked out. Okay? And that's bad, <laughs> basically. The only way to heal the grievous wounds is is either through you know some artifacts if you find them or by going back to the precipice and cancelling your expedition, which is not ideal. All right, so that's what it is. Let's quickly have a look at um, our oops, our friend uh, Espern. Okay, sorry for that. Our friend Espern. He's a support character, as you can see. There's quite a lot of um, text to it. Um, again, he has moved to defense. Agility and Vitality, all d6, so reasonably weak, and he should stay in the back. Although he can stand the ground with his Force Orb Cane if some monsters manage to close in on him, because this is the most powerful dice you can get, or use the fair die. However, what's what's great about what's great about Esper and Locarno and why I enjoy playing with him, having him in, in my party, even though that his firepower is not that great, as you will see shortly with um, uh, Vorn, he not only can he provide the force barrier, so he changes the defense roles for everybody to um, to the D12. He can also mental command uh, mental command uh, enemies, so he can move them around for six plus. But also he has a psychic ability. So after the destiny roll is made, Espern can move one discarded destiny dice to the available destiny dice section of the precipice board. So for example, you roll two sixes and you, as you may remember, you have to discard all the doubles. So then you can keep one. So a fantastic, fantastic utility. Okay, secret agenda. I won't be talking about secret agenda until we be begin our missions. Also, there is a, there is a, there is a, there is the other side of of each character sheet, which gives uh, um, it's like a level up. This is called inspired uh, portion of your character. So you you get buffs. Your your attacks are stronger. Your abilities are stronger or easier to obtain. Pius Vorn. Okay. Now she is one one of my favorite characters with this flamer. She's just crazy. And yep, yeah, it's a she. <laughs> At first I thought it was a guy, but no. According to the lore, it's a woman and she's a companion of Thaddeus. I need to go into the lore a little bit deeper to understand the relationship between them. So she can move three defense, d6, agility and vitality, d8. Four, four action slots, same as same as um, the other characters that we have, but not all characters have three. I will not spoil. Oh, but look at that, she has three options. 
She has a Vindicator Flamer, Vindicate, Vindicator Chain Blade, and also Cleansing Flames. Right, for 4 plus, also she can place Inferno, which is I don't have, I don't think I have. I might, I might look at the um, at my 3D prints. Maybe I'll find something that we can replace the token with some 3D prints uh, before we start. Okay, so basically what that does, it just lights the hex on fire, and, and every enemy or hero, the explorer who crosses that lit. Hex takes uh, takes damage. Okay, uh, she's incredibly crazy with this uh, flamer because this is the AOE attack almost every single time. As you can see, this one one says torrent, and torrent ignores cover. Not only that, but also make an attack roll against each other hostile in the same hex as the target. So for both for the flamer. And the cleansing flame so one plus and you already have aoe and you ignore cover fantastic fantastic and slightly overpowered in my opinion last but not least amalin she uh she's a perfect um uh, fit for the for, for, for our party because we have a healer we have a short range damage dealer we have a support utility character and she's our long-range sniper who can just obliterate groups from from the other side of the of the map basically she carries the long rifle and again she has two choices she can use for one plus or four plus she can use ranger scope she has a power blade which you can see in her hand right she can um, put a chameleon chameleo line cloak on herself that will make her invisible um Oh no, not, not invisible, sorry. It will boost her defense from D6 to D12, which is fantastic. And she also has face crystal. And she can move through walls and enter obstructed hexes as part of the move. As long as she doesn't finish her move action on either of these um, yeah, um, types of terrain. So there we are. That's our party. That's the setup. Okay. It was slightly longer than I expected, but here they are. Okay. Here is a party of explorers ready to undertake our very first expedition. So, see you shortly. Join us in our very first run, very first expedition in the Warhammer Quest Blackstone Forest. Hope you enjoyed this uh, introductory video and if there is something that you would like me to tell you more about uh, before we start or during the gameplay then please drop a line in the comment section below and I'll see you um, in the next episode. See you soon, thanks for watching, bye bye.